You are a home health nurse caring for Mr. Ferris, a 75-year-old patient with hypertension and diabetes. During a routine visit, you prepare to administer his blood pressure medication, but Mr. Ferris refuses to take it. He appears mentally sharp, fully aware of his decision, and provides a clear reason. The medication has made him feel dizzy in the past, and he's concerned about falling. His daughter, who lives nearby and assists with his care, overhears the conversation and becomes agitated. She insists that you administer the medication, claiming, Dad's not thinking clearly. You need to give it to him, his blood pressure is already high. This ethical dilemma involves balancing patient autonomy with the family's concern about Mr. Ferris' ability to consent. In this case, the ethical dilemma centers on the following elements. Mr. Ferris has a right to refuse his blood pressure medication as long as he has the capacity to understand the risks and benefits and can make an informed choice. The healthcare team has a duty to make sure Mr. Ferris understands the risk of not taking his medication, which could cause harm, such as increased risk of a heart attack or stroke. Administering the medication against Mr. Ferris will could cause emotional and psychological harm. Respecting Mr. Ferris' decision is an aspect of justice because it ensures that his rights as a capable adult making a healthcare decision are recognized regardless of his family's concerns. Now that you've identified the ethical dilemma and the ethical principles involved, here's the next steps you could take in this case. Gather more information to ensure that Mr. Ferris has the capacity to make an informed decision and understands the risk of not taking the medication. You assess his mental status and comprehension by checking if he understands the nature of his condition, comprehends the consequences of not taking his medication, such as the risks of stroke or heart attack, can articulate his reasons for refusing the medication. It's important to listen for gaps in understanding as sometimes patients don't fully comprehend the treatment or its expected outcome. This can be an opportunity to educate the patient. In this case, after confirming that Mr. Ferris is fully capable of making this decision, you proceed based on his informed refusal. Next, you discuss possible alternatives and explain the possibility of adjusting the dosage or switching medications. Encourage Mr. Ferris to contact his physician to discuss the situation and other options for treatment. Showing empathy about why someone is refusing medication can make a difference in how a patient responds to you and your recommendations. Next, you turn to Mr. Ferris' daughter, who is clearly upset. Family involvement can sometimes complicate care when patients have different perspectives. It's important to reassure her that you understand her concern for her father's well-being while explaining the patient's rights. You calmly explain that Mr. Ferris, as a mentally competent adult, has the right to refuse treatment, even if that decision carries risks. You might say something like, I understand that you want the best for your father, and it can be difficult to see him make this choice. However, he has the right to make his own healthcare decisions, and we have to respect that. Our job is to ensure he's fully informed, and I'll continue to monitor his condition closely. This conversation helps diffuse tension and ensures the family understands the legal and ethical framework of patient-centered care. Documenting the entire interaction is crucial for both legal and clinical purposes. This documentation should include Mr. Ferris' refusal of the medication and his reason, concerns about dizziness his understanding about the risks of refusing the medication, his demonstrated capacity to make the decision, the family's response and concerns, any steps taken to follow up on alternative treatment options, such as contacting his physician. This documentation ensures that if any issues arise later, there is a clear record of the informed refusal and the steps taken to address the situation. To ensure continuity of care, Notify the physician or nurse practitioner overseeing Mr. Ferris' care. They may suggest scheduling a follow-up appointment to reassess the medication, adjusting the dosage or prescribing an alternative medication to manage the side effects, setting up a consultation with a pharmacist to review the patient's medications. You can also update other members of the home health care team, such as the social worker, 
who might engage with the family to provide support or address concerns about caregiving decisions. Although Mr. Ferris has refused this medication, you continue to monitor his blood pressure and overall health closely. During your next visit, you check in with him to see how he is feeling and whether his symptoms have improved without the medication. If his condition worsens, you can discuss his options again and remind him that you're available to help him navigate his care choices. Additionally, follow up with his daughter to ensure she feels heard and involved in her father's care while reinforcing the importance of respecting his decisions. The team may also offer additional resources, such as support groups for family caregivers, to help reduce the family's stress and anxiety surrounding the patient's healthcare decisions. In this scenario, you navigated a complex issue by balancing the rights of the patient with the concerns of his family. The care team respected Mr. Ferris' autonomy while ensuring the family was engaged, informed, and supported. By involving the physician, documenting the decision, and monitoring the patient's condition, you demonstrated a comprehensive approach that ensures patient-centered care remains the priority.